Good morning, and thank you for uh, attending our webinar this morning. This is Jim Guinan. I'm an annuity sales director here at Insurance Agency Marketing, and I want to well, welcome all of you. We appreciate your time, and this morning um, we will be talking about the American National uh, pension program. Part of that, and it's called the Solutions for Business Owners. Our presenter will be Jonathan Sachs, who works in the pension sales area at American National, and also Mike Carcello, who is a national sales manager with American National, will be also joining us. So before we get into their um, topic and uh, answer any questions you have, I wanted to uh, briefly go through some. Uh, housekeeping items and some things that are new going on here at Insurance Agency Marketing, as we always do, and I'll try to keep that as brief as I can. Also, I do want to remind you that our webinars are recorded, so if for some reason you can't listen to the whole uh, presentation, um, we will have a recording of that available later on uh, today. So, and we appreciate, we know that you're busy and your time is valuable, so uh, things happen, phone calls are made, and people have to leave so we understand that but uh, with that I did want to talk to you a little bit about uh, what's new here at IMES and um, we have uh, right now as we speak um, going on this week our Life and Annuity Academy this will be our last Academy for 2016 um, it is a two-day training and uh, you may have heard us talk about our academies before but we do uh, try to provide as much information in about two days as we can. We're always looking for top producers to come to our academies, and um, this is no exception. We will have, uh, for this group, about 25 agents, typically a little larger. Uh, but uh, at this academy, it'll be located at Athene's home office. And uh, if you have interest in Looking into this further, we're always looking for good producers, individuals that are writing fixed annuity or life business right now. And um, I will uh, launch a poll here if you do like uh, to get more education and advance your business. Um, we would certainly be glad to um, get you more information about the academy, more details, um, an agenda. Again, what we're looking for are people that are um, writing fixed annuity business, writing life business. It's not a 101 course. So uh, if you're new to it or you've written other lines of business in the past and you're new to the fixed annuity area, uh, this academy may not be for you. But for those people that um, do start to write, start growing that business, they're certainly on the top of the list for future academies. Our next academy will most likely be next spring around March. So you may want to keep uh, that in mind, and we will be continuing to offer the, the opportunity to learn more, get more um, education, uh, write, help you write your business, and so that you can um, consider that as a, as a goal for 2017. So again, if you have more questions or would like to get uh, information after our academy, for those of you that do respond yes, we'll get a link from Sarah, and Sarah usually sends that out right away. And um, what that does is get you the link to register, uh, put you on the list, and then we will look at that for, and again, that's right around the corner. March is not that far away, believe it or not. So we appreciate your response to that um, question. And as always, so you can answer or excuse me, you can call and ask me more information or any of the marketers. If you have a relationship with the Life or Annuity Marketer now, they'd be glad to talk to you about it further. Okay, uh, we are still in the qualification period for our third annual uh, golf outing. Uh, it is called Caddies and Casinos. Now, this particular uh, incentive trip is for Athene business only. Uh, as you can see on the screen, the qualification period runs through the end of this year. So still some time, still uh, three and a half months or so to uh, write business at the level of a million and a quarter will qualify you. Um, a million and three quarters qualifies for you and a guest to attend, which uh, the dates are not on this slide, but I believe it's in, I want to say March of next year. 
So uh, it was a 14-month qualification. All Athene business counts towards this uh, incentive trip. That would be index business as well as uh, traditional fixed business. So anything with Athene qualifies. Uh, we recently came out with an updated list of those producers and their status. So if you've been writing, we appreciate it. Um, and uh, set your sights on uh, qualifying for that. We'll be glad to get you an update. And also, if you are not familiar with Athene's products, have a case to write, would like to know more about what opportunities they have, whether it's income-oriented or accumulation, we'll be glad to, to work with you on that. Okay, our creative services. Now, you've seen emails come out here recently from Matt Neal. Matt does a lot of the... Uh, creative services uh, in the department of, of helping agents with developing their business and, and getting a game plan going. So he not just he doesn't just help with webinars. There's a lot of things he and Adam do. Uh, we've seen a lot of growth in the uh, development of um, websites, agents interested in getting websites, as well as um, newsletters, email newsletters. Those are some areas we're seeing more and more interest in that every day as a way to brand your business and reach uh, new prospects that you may not have been getting to before. So if you have questions about that, would like to know more about how that can grow your business, you want to contact Matt Neal or Adam in the creative department. Okay, again, a couple other incentive programs moving on and then we'll get to the gentleman with American National. We want to talk about a couple incentive programs that help you in your practice. First of all, marketing reimbursement. If you're not familiar, what that is is for all your index business or single premium life business, for example, there are dollars that are thrown into a marketing reimbursement account for you. Um, this is dollars that build for you to use for future business expenses. All you have to do is provide the receipts to us and then we reimburse from that account. It doesn't come from your uh, commission and it comes essentially from us here at IMS. We throw those dollars in, so if you have a seminar program or a lead drop or even for your E&O and you want to find out, you would talk with us and we'll get you an update on that. The balance does not cease or have to be exhausted at the end of the year, so it's an ongoing rolling account that builds for you. The more business you write, the more business goes into the marketing reimbursement. Also, uh, the referred producer program, as you can see, pretty straightforward. We get you a cash bonus when your referrals contract, um, and then the bonuses just continue. As they continue to write, that's um, dollars in your bank account, essentially, for the production that they will provide. And again, this is not something that comes from you. It comes from insurance agency marketing. It's our way of saying to you, Thanks for the referrals that you send our way, um, life, fixed annuity, any business that they're writing counts towards that referral program. And um, that's our way, again, of thanking you because um, I'm not sure many of you know, but it costs a lot of money to recruit and contract an agent and then have them write business. It does. Spend, we do spend a lot of money, so we're more than happy to, to, to pay that back for those producing agents. Okay, and then uh, moving on here, our annuity alternative. You've heard, seen a lot of information going out from insurance agency marketing on the annuity alternative. You've seen webinars on single premium whole life. Uh, we do know from our competitors and from our carriers that help us with single premium whole life that the best producers for this type of product are annuity writers. So if you are working with clients that have a um, dollars for retirement, but maybe not just earmarked for that. Maybe it's more for to pass on at their their death. Um, there are products in the marketplace today that can help them accomplish multiple goals, and that is the single premium whole life or index life. We presently have nine carriers that offer this type of product, and if you haven't talked with uh, Mark and Marcus and Sandy in the life department recently about this and how your clients can benefit from single premium life, you should do so and find out uh, what's available. Um, I will, uh, I do have a question for that. If you'd like to get more information um, on the uh, single premium whole life, sorry about that. I was looking for the question. 
Go ahead and answer yes to that. We'll get you more information. Again, Sandy usually sends, or not Sandy, excuse me, Sarah will send a, uh, most recently has been sending out the single premium whole life toolkit on the email uh, that can help you understand that product a little bit further. So if you'd like to get that uh, or just have a conversation or perhaps uh, you have someone in mind that uh, may be interested in wealth transfer, let us know. Uh, we'll be glad to get you a quote, get you more information, and, and see if it's a suitable sale for your clients. Certainly appreciate your feedback on that. I uh, want to move on here. And now what I will do is turn over to the gentleman with American National, uh, and that will be uh, first, I guess, Mike Carcello, our national sales manager, will talk briefly here. Mike, um, I'll turn it over for you. Thank you, Jim, and everyone who could take time out of their busy schedules this morning to join us for this webinar. I would like to introduce Jonathan Sachs from our pension sales team at American National, who's going to be discussing um, deductible retirement plans and uh, solutions for small business owners, and he is also going to cover uh, pension prospecting. And uh, with that said, uh, Jonathan, if you would like to uh, proceed uh, uh, whenever you're ready. That'd be great. Thanks, Mike. I appreciate that. Um, I don't see the ability to share my screen. Um, yeah, it's on my I have my screen. Uh, um, send that request to Jonathan. There we go. Thank you. Okay, is that working? Uh, I can see it on my end. Wonderful, thank you very much. You're welcome. <laughs> All right, uh, thank you very much for having me today. My name is Jonathan Sachs. I am with American National. I'm one of the pension sales consultants. I design the plans, market the plans, help implement the plans here at the home office in Galveston, Texas. Um, today we're going to talk about the retirement plan market, why you should be in the market, what the market consists of. We're going to talk a little bit about plan design and prospecting, and then we're going to go through some examples as well. So why do we even want to talk about qualified plans, and why should we be talking to our clients about these types of products? Well, small business owners, when they adopt these types of plans, it is very likely that it's going to be the largest tax deduction that they're going to receive. These plans are very powerful and we're going to see that later on in the presentation. But they are qualified plans. So it's the ability for the client to save retirement dollars and therefore increase their wealth accumulation. Here at American National, we specialize in the small business market. We define that as 25 lives or less. We do do larger plans. We have plans with 100 and even 200 lives um, that we service. But we see that niche market of 25 lives or less because it is such an underserviced market. There are over 26 million small businesses in America. The small business market is over 90% of all businesses in America. But of those businesses, Less than 70% of them have no type of plan whatsoever. If it's a business with five or less people, 90%. Any type of qualified plan. So you can see this is a woefully underserviced market. But we're talking about a market that has over $5 trillion of assets. We're also talking about retirement marketing. We're talking about 75% of Americans who don't believe they have enough saved for retirement and they won't have enough saved for retirement by age 55. So a very underserviced market. Also, when you're prospecting, this is an opportunity for you to approach your client with a fresh, innovative approach. We're not going to be talking to them about the latest rates or riders. 
this is an opportunity for you to talk to your clients about their retirement plan. What type of qualified plan do you have, Mr. Client? When you're talking to your clients, you want to make sure that you're offering a full service to them. Because if you leave money on the table, if there's something that you don't offer them, or if they don't know that you offer it, they normally don't offer that information up either. We want to make sure that our clients know that we are in this business. Oh, you know, I just gave my 401k to this other guy over here. I didn't know you did that kind of business. Well, that's our fault. We need to make sure our clients know that we offer this, whether it's a defined benefit plan or a defined contribution plan. Mr. Client, do you have a retirement plan? So in the retirement plan world, those are the two major choices, defined benefit defined contribution. Your defined contribution is your ubiquitous 401k plan. You define the contribution. You say, I'm going to put $100 a paycheck, 50 bucks a paycheck, 5% of my pay, whatever that number is. That's what I'm going to contribute to my 401k plan on a regular basis. Great. How much do I have when I retire? Well, I don't know. Did you invest in the money market account? Did you invest in a global real estate account or a biotech fund? We don't know what your performance is going to be. And what's your time horizon? Are you retiring in five years, in 10 years, in 20 years? So we define the contribution up front. We have no idea what our benefit is when we retire. Your defined benefit plans are your quote unquote pension plans of your. Pension plans are making a huge comeback, especially because of the Pension Protection Act of 2006. So Defined benefit plans are the exact opposite. They, divide, they define your benefit. Okay, when I retire at age 62, I want you to hand me a check for a million dollars. Great. How much money do I have to put into that plan on an annual basis? I don't know. Are you going to retire in five years or 20 years? If you're going to retire in five years and I've got to accumulate enough to hand you a check for a million dollars versus you retiring in 20 years and I've got to accumulate a million dollars, you can see there that that annual contribution is a vastly different number. So these are the two different playing fields. And as you can see, we can overlap and actually have one of each. At American National, we are a full service operation. We offer defined benefit plans. We offer defined contribution plans whether it's a Roth 401k or whether it's the 412e, or the cash balance plan is the new kid on the block, and we offer those as well. We're going to talk a lot about these different types of plans a little bit later. The reason why I have this slide here is, again, we specialize in the small business market, and I cannot tell you how many times we come up with a sole proprietor or a partnership and we propose something like this, and their answer is, well, I've talked to my CPA, and my CPA said, you know, you can't do this. Your only option is a SEP or a simple IRA. It's a misnomer in the industry. That is not true. Any type of business owner, even nonprofit, can have any type of plan. I'm actually currently setting up a 401k plan for a nonprofit as we speak. So where do we go to look for business? Who should we be talking to? Well, we're always trying to find a reason to stay fresh and approach our current book of business. Yes, we've done business with them in the past. Yes, we have an ongoing relationship with them. But still, we always want to be fresh in their mind. Whether it's a life-changing event or whether it's something that comes up where they need our services, we want them to think of us. So do your clients even know that you offer these types of services? This is a wonderful opportunity for you to go and touch your book of business again. You know, Bill, I was thinking about you the other day, and I know we've done some business, but, uh, you know, I was wondering, we've never actually talked about your retirement plan. You know, let's go ahead and have that discussion. Well, okay, I have a client, and I've done his business for a long time, but he's a nine-to-fiver. He works for this company. He works nine-to-five. 
Well, even those nine to fivers are consultants on the side, or they have an eBay account on the side, or they have an Etsy account on the side. They're a sole proprietor, or should I say they moonlight as a sole proprietor. So don't overlook them. Whether it's your current book of business, whether it's your new prospects that you're talking about, you need to make it a habit to mention pension. We always need to be talking about this. Because again, if we don't offer this to our clients, we're leaving that money on the table and somebody else is going to come and take it. So let's talk about who we should be talking to. I'm going to show you a small list here in a minute. But your current book of business, all of your new clients. One of the things that I've discussed is the tax advantage of having a qualified plan. Who better knows their tax situation than their CPAs? If you have a relationship with a CPA, this is a great opportunity for you. What I've suggested a lot of times is, you know what? Have an appreciation dinner for the CPA. You're going to pay for the dinner, but the CPA is going to fill the seats with pre-qualified, warm leads. Small business owners who need tax deductions, who aren't saving for retirement, don't have a qualified plan, or if they do have a qualified plan, it doesn't fit. It's not doing the job. Have a seminar. Talk about why they need to have the qualified plan, why these plans are important not just for the big businesses, but for the small business owner as well. CPAs. Now, a lot of you on the call today are independent business owners. So let me ask you, do you currently have a qualified plan? If not, why not? Do you own life insurance? When you talk to your clients and you sell your clients life insurance, do you talk with conviction because, you know what, I have this product. I not only make the Kool-Aid, but I drink it too. If you set up one of these plans, you can talk with that conviction. We have an incentive here at American National. If you're licensed with us and you set up a plan, we will waive the setup fee. All you pay is the annual fee. If you have three plans on the books, meaning yours and two more, we waive the annual fee. You now have a free plan, free of annual admin fees. And you know compliance hates that word. Here's a couple of ideas. It's a small list because you should be talking to everyone. Whether it's a convenience store on the corner, a doctor, a lawyer, your landscaper, it doesn't matter what they do, what type of business entity they are, whether they're a sole proprietor or a C Corp, an S Corp, an LLC, it doesn't matter. You should be talking to everybody. We're going to a bit of detail here, but the key takeaway here is I want you to pique your client's interest and get some information. We have a proposal request and census form. We have it in PDF. We can email it to you. We can fax it to you. We can send it through the regular mail. You can go on our website and download it. Or you can actually log into the, or go to the website and just fill it out right there on the spot with your laptop or your iPad or whatever the case may be. Fill it out with your client on the spot, hit submit, you know it comes directly to us. Just get that information. Pique their interest. Don't be the expert. That's my job. Let's just talk about the prospects of having a qualified plan. We'll turn around the proposal in 72 hours or less then you and I will have a conversation on what we designed, why we designed it, and where the advantages are. If you want me to have it, sell it to the client and have a conference call, great. If you want to do it, I'll make sure you're prepared for the meeting. If we need to have the CPA on the call, great. Because if the client's on the call, the CPA is on the call, and we are both on the call, and we propose this qualified plan, and the CPA goes, wow, you know what, this is a great idea. Do you think the client's going to say no? I'm more than happy to have the CPA on the call. 
So, okay, I need to talk to everyone. Great, what do I say? Well, Mr. Klein, do you currently have a qualified plan? Yeah, I do. Congratulations. You had the wherewithal to implement the plan. Whether you did it for yourself, for that wealth accumulation and for that tax deduction, or whether you actually did it because all your competitors offered it, and if you don't, you're going to lose all your employees. So you're using it as an employee retention. Or you just like to offer that benefit to your employees because you're passionate about how important it is to save for retirement. But let me ask you, Mr. Client, how long has it been since you've reviewed that plan? Do you have an old plan or a new plan? Maybe when they set up the plan, the business had two employees and now it has 10. Maybe they need a better plan design now. Maybe we can lower their fees, offer them better investment solutions, offer them better service. So just because they have a plan, don't turn away. We still want to take a look at that plan and see if we can't build a better mousetrap. If they don't have a plan, Mr. Client, do you know that by not having a plan, it might be costing you money? Well, that doesn't make any sense. Well, think about it. You're a sole proprietor, and you've got $50,000. You can pay tax on the 50. Whatever is net is what you're left with. Or you could take that $50,000 and put it into a qualified plan. The entire 50 is yours, because you're not going to pay tax on it, and you're going to get a deduction in the process. Mr. Client, it might actually be costing you money not to have a plan. Some of the things that we ask for on the proposed request and census form are strictly key to the plan design. This is the most important piece because I can build the best mousetrap in the world, but if you don't need one or if it doesn't work for you, it doesn't matter. So what's your goals? What's your budget? What are your aspirations? What are we trying to accomplish here? Those are the questions on the census form, and those help us design the plan. So let's look at a couple of things. The first thing I want to talk about is this guy right here, the Roth 401k plan. Again, do you have a new plan or an old plan? Do you offer the Roth feature? This is a relatively new feature. I call it the great equalizer. This is the great equalizer in the 401k industry. Why? Well, you have your Roth IRA. What is the biggest problem with a Roth IRA? Well, first of all, if your client has the audacity to make too much money, guess what? They're not allowed Roth. But if they do fit into the income adjusted, the adjusted gross income requirements, the contribution is not that high. Well, the Roth 401k plan not only addresses both of these, but I would say smashes them. First of all, no AGI requirement. The great equalizer. If you've got a client that's making two, three, four, a million dollars a year, doesn't matter. They are eligible for the Roth 401k. Not only that, but the contribution limit is not 5,500 or 6,500 if they're 50 or older, it's $18,000 a year. If they're age 50 or older, it's $24,000 a year of Roth contributions. I just showed your client how they can have qualified tax-free retirement income, and guess what? I didn't even ask them if they're insurable. This is the great equalizer. Now, you don't get a tax deduction up front on the Roth contribution. It works just like a Roth IRA in that regard. So it's not a zero-sum game. If they wanted to put 9000 in as a traditional 401k contribution so they get that deduction and then 9000 in as a Roth so they get a little bit of both, that's fine. Moving on to a safe harbor 401k plan. Most small businesses that adopt 401k plans are going to be right here. This is going to be the majority of your business right here. Safe Harbor 401k plans. There are two types of Safe Harbor formula. There's the matching formula and the non-elective. And depending on what they're trying to accomplish, and of course their budget, 
we choose for you which one to use. Now, with that being said, we can pivot. Okay, look, this is what I designed. You know, that's great, uh, but we we're kind of thinking of, okay, fine, we'll pivot. Just because we design something doesn't mean that's what you have to have. Because, you know, it's a moving target. Their goals might change. The key difference here is the non-elective, everyone gets 3% no matter what. On the match, it's a pay-to-play. So most of the times, these small business owners, they don't want to give up any more money. Okay, well, let's do a matching safe harbor. If your employees don't put money into the plan, they're not going to receive any match. <clears throat> Excuse me. We can talk about these more in depth on a case-to-case -case basis. Now, the biggest thing about the safe harbor is the government says that the safe harbor has to be in existence for 90 days the first year it's adopted. Well, 90 days from the end of the year, which is at October 1st, we ha still need time to complete the paperwork. So actually, Safe Harbor 401k plans for the 2016 plan year are pretty much done. We're getting the last ones in right now. Um, and even if I got one in today, I let the agent know there's no guarantee. Because I cannot guarantee him that, one, we finish all the paperwork in two weeks, and two, the client returns a signed plan document by September 30th. Because that's in the client's hands, not mine. We'll do everything in our power to make it work. But the Safe Harbor 401k plan does have this deadline. Normally, in this case, what we do is we do a 401k plan for 2016, and then we amend it into Safe Harbor for 2017. And again, we can discuss that on a case-to-case -case basis. Let's get into some plan design. This is the SEP IRA. Again, most small business owners are looking at this. Thing. Yeah, this is what my CPA told me to do. You go to your CPA for your retirement plan working. Isn't that kind of like going to a general practitioner for brain surgery? Here's a SEP IRA. The problem with a SEP IRA is what you give yourself, you give to everybody else. If the owner wants to give himself 15% of his income as a benefit, guess what? All of his employees get that same thing. Now, this plan, if you look at the bottom there, spends $62,800. We're going to take this, and we're just going to design a better mousetrap. Instead of doing a SEP, we do what's called a new comparability profit-sharing formula. Plan spends the same thing, $62,800. Look at the owner's share. It went from half to over three-quarters. You think we can sell this plan? You think the client will be interested? Plan design is key. I created this piece and we just started circulating. It is approved and uh, you can get it in PDF or anything. It talks about why the SEP IRA beats out the 401k plan. Now, because of the uh, anti-business unit known as compliance, there was only so much that I could put on here. But the key takeaway here is that a 401k plan is going to beat a SEP IRA almost every single time. If your client is age 50 or older, I guarantee the 401k will beat the SEP 100% of the time. The reason for that is the SEP does not have a catch-up contribution. The 401k does. So even if they both maxed out at 53,000, the 401k for somebody that's age 50 can go to 59,000 because of the catch-up provision. So again, if your client is age 50 or older and they have a SEP, I can get that much more in, in the 401k plan. Again, this is a client-approved piece that we do have available. Now we're going to shift to the defined benefit plan. The thing about a defined benefit plan or these pension plans is you cannot believe how much money you can put away. And in correlation, how large of a tax deduction you can show your client. Pension plans were going away. And you heard about all these underfunded plans and everyone getting in trouble. Well, that's changed. The traditional defined benefit plan is now flexible thanks to the Pension Protection Act. And that's what we're going to look at here. So here's a situation, an owner with three employees. 
the target contribution for this plan is just over 116,000. Look at the owner's contribution. That's a pretty good split, don't you think? So basically what happens is at the end of the year, our actuaries crunch the numbers and they send out a letter saying, Mr. Klein, congratulations, it's time to fund your plan. Your minimum funding requirement is 54 and a half. Target that you saw on the previous slide, 116. Your maximum allowed contribution, roughly 146. Please fund somewhere within this range. Well, the client knew what he was getting into, had a really good year, and he funded it at the maximum. Great. Here are two rolls around. Dear Mr. Client, here's your minimum, here's your maximum. Please fund. Client had another good year, he maintained the level funding. Year three, the letter goes out. Look at that minimum. Now, if the client does choose to put zero dollars in year four, that minimum is probably going to shoot back up to that $50,000 level. So I would never recommend that they not fund the plan. They should put at least something in there to help maintain that cushion of flexibility. That's one of the great things about the 401k and one of the great lures of the 401k is they're fully flexible plans. These defined benefit plans, as you can see, have minimum funding requirements. There's no way you could skip two years in a row. And you could only skip one year if you did some regressive funding up front, as you see in this example. Now we're going to look at the 412 plan. The 412 plan is known as a fully insured or fully guaranteed defined benefit plan. The way that I fully insure and or fully, fully guarantee what I'm going to show you on paper is because I'm using guaranteed products. I'm using a fixed annuity and I'm using whole life insurance. <clears throat> Nothing's going to change. Individuals age 44 wants to retire at 62. He's making 125 and he wants to receive 125 for the rest of his life, which is $10,416 a month. We can fund the plan with an annuity. Look at that contribution. This guy's only 44. Look at that annual contribution. You get to write that off. But you know what? Let's change it a bit. We're going to add life insurance into the mix. So now, instead of being funded only by an annuity, it's augmented by the premium of the life insurance and the cash value that the life insurance builds. Again, it's a whole life product. Over $3 million of life insurance. Look at that insurance premium. You get full commission on that. Plus, you get the annuity commission. Look at the plan cost. It's now roughly $96,000. So what did we do? By adding life insurance, first of all, $3 million of death benefit. So if something horrible were to happen, the plan self-fulfills. His beneficiary is going to receive that death benefit tax-free, minus the cash value. So in this scenario, the plan's cost increased by 10.5, assuming a 30% tax bracket, the after-tax increase is roughly $7,000. You're paying for $57,000 of life insurance within a qualified plan with pre-tax dollars. The company's paying for life insurance. There is a PS58 cost or equivalent benefit cost that you're going to get $10.99 for at the end of the year. That's a, you're going to get $10.99 for two or $3,000, depending on how much life insurance and what your premium looks like. And that's how the life insurance maintains its tax-favored status. So, again, these are guaranteed plans. The reason they're guaranteed is because you're going to guarantee me you're going to pay that premium every year. And I'm going to guarantee you that death benefit and that money benefit, that lump sum benefit when you retire. This is called our million dollar sales idea. Again, it's a client approved piece. We guarantee your client one million dollars, live or die. How? We solve for a million dollars. We solve that at retirement, 
the lump sum benefit is a million dollars. And then in the process, we purchase a million dollars of life insurance inside the plan. If the client makes it to retirement age, guess what? We write them a check for a million dollars. If unfortunately they don't make it, they get the life insurance. Again, full commission on these premiums. And it doesn't have to be a million dollars. We can solve for half a million, three quarters of a million. It's the concept here. So as I said earlier, I like my job. This is what I do for a living. I don't want you to be the expert. I don't want you to approach your client and say, hey, you need a 401k plan. Because you know what? They might need something else. Let's get that proposal request and census form completed. Submit it to us. We'll turn around and get your proposal. And then we'll have a discussion to make sure you understand it when you're presenting it to the client. If you want me on the call, if you want me to present it to the client, I'm happy to do it for you or with you. I told you we specialize in the small business arena. We define that as 25 lives or less. So there's a one-time setup fee of $500. Depending on what type of plan it is, depending on what the annual fee is. If it's an owner-only 401k plan, it's only $400 a year. The cash balance plan is $2,100 a year. Um, I'm sorry, the cash balance plan, because it is such an intricate plan, the setup fee for that plan is actually $1,250. Um, I actually need to add that to it. There is a small business tax credit that's available. If they qualify, Qualify, they need to have at least one normal employee, meaning it could not be an owner-only plan. And that tax credit is good for three years, and it is up to $500 a year. So not only do you get to deduct your expenses, that includes your annual fee and your setup fee and your contributions, but you get a credit on top of it. Within our traditional defined benefit plan and our 401k plan, we use our WealthQuest 3 group variable annuity. Now, before everyone sucks all the air out of the room, this is a non-registered annuity. You do not need a securities license. All you need is a life license. The exceptions are Massachusetts and Connecticut. The product is not offered in New York. Over 50 sub-accounts, great. Here's a 401k plan, setting it up, 50 sub-accounts. Client comes up to you and goes, okay, <laughs> where do I put my money? I, I, I mean, I've got 50 accounts staring me in the face. I don't know what I'm doing. You don't have a securities license. Do you want to answer that question? We've teamed with Morningstar to help with this solution. There is no fee to the client. So if the client wants to sign the Morningstar agreement onto their 401k plan, there is no fee to the company. Any individual that chooses to utilize Morningstar services, they're charged individually. Everyone gets one free look. They complete Morningstar's risk assessment questionnaire. Morningstar comes back and says, based on your answers, this is where I would invest. You log on to our 401k website and you mimic those investments. One free look. Let's say you got a lot of life-changing events coming up. About to graduate, about to pay off student loans, about to have a child, you know, about to get married. You want professional ongoing money management. They sign on as a fiduciary. Another layer of protection, right? They charge 50 basis points for professional money management. Considerably less than what a broker would charge. Here's a couple of websites to look at. When we file our taxes at the end of the year, we file a 1040. Most qualified plans will file a 5500. That's their tax form. These are just databases that hold up public information. You can go in there knowing what their plan is, participation level, how many assets they have, how old it is. It gives you some information so you're not going in blind, assuming they have a current plan. If they don't have a plan, obviously there's nothing to see. So we've gone through a lot today, but 
we're talking about why to do business with American National. Well, you've seen our fees. They're some of the lowest in the industry. You've seen our plan design. We'll do anything, whether it's a 401k or a defined benefit or a cash balance or a combination thereof. But another great thing is we are a turnkey solution. We are a one-stop shop. It's designed here, it's implemented here, it's our investment products. You don't have to call three or four different contacts to answer your client's needs and questions. You have one contact here at American National. We do everything here. And that's how we keep our fees as low as they are. So we've talked about life insurance inside defined benefit plans. Did I mention the commissions on the life insurance and the defined benefit plans? 401k plans. Again, if you do a takeover plan that has assets in it, when that money rolls, you get an immediate commission up front. Very nice. And you approach and way to talk to your client and go and touch your current book of business. This is our team here at American National. Uh, Don Franklin is the head of our team. And you can see we've got Alphabet Soup behind our names. Um, Bob's actually an attorney. He gets all the difficult questions. But what I'm showing you here is we have over 80 years experience in this industry between the five of us. If I can't answer a question, I'm not shy to let you know that I can't answer your question. But I'm confident that my team can. I'll go and consult with my colleagues and I'll come back with the answer. So whether you're talking to me or Dominic or Bob or Mike or Don, you are in good hands. We can take care of that plan design, that implementation, and answer any questions you may have. Here's our website. Again, the proposed request and census form is available on the website. We have a lot of information there for you, including pre-approved ads. Here's our email address, our general email, email address, phone number, and, our, and uh, again, our website. Um, I want to thank you very much for your time today. Uh, I know everyone has a very busy schedule. Um, Jim, thank you very much for having me today. Uh, if there's any questions, I'm more than happy to uh, answer any questions. Thank you, Jonathan. There are a couple questions. One I did uh, receive was um, if uh, the producer has uh, is required to get a variable license, which I know you answered, um, they asked, do you have to be licensed in variable contracts? Excellent question. Um, the, again, the exceptions are Connecticut and Massachusetts, and for some reason they just they still want to see that securities license. Um, but the answer is no. Um, we've been doing this uh, for almost two decades now. We're not the only insurance carrier that has this product, um, but meaning that um, uh, non-registered uh, variable annuity. But the Pension Securities Act of 1934 has in there that if you're using a group variable annuity solely of a qualified plan, it is exempt from security status. It is therefore non-registered, and no, you do not need a security license. Okay, good. Uh, another agent asked a question about commissions. They're asking maybe per, a particular percentage, but just generally, can you address um, kind of how the agent gets paid on, on a pension program? I don't think anyone wants to answer that question. No, I'm only <laughs> playing. <laughs> Absolutely. So we pay on every dollar that comes into the plan, whether it's a 401k plan, defined benefit plan, or anything in between. We pay on every dollar that comes through the door. If you're rolling over an IRA into your 401k plan, you get a commission. If you're taking over a 401k plan and those assets are rolling in, you get a commission. The nice thing about these 401k plans is they're funded every paycheck. That means you're getting a commission every week or every two weeks, depending on how often they're paid. It kind of forms an annuity for you. So you're actually getting these dollars coming in as you get more and more of these plans under your belt. Um, the fixed annuity is just, a, a, depending on your contract level, it's just a, it's the same regardless of how much money comes into the plan. The 401k plan, meaning the WealthQuest 3 annuity, um, does have a, a sliding scale depending on the assets within the plan. Okay. 
All right. Another question here, uh, Jonathan is uh, wants to know when is it when is it not a good idea to use life insurance within a 412 E three plan as it relates to poor health. Great question. Um, so a couple of things. If they're heavily rated and the company can pick up the dime for that life insurance policy, why not? Um, but if you're under a budget and that life insurance premium is, is basically taking you over budget, then yeah, I mean, in that type of scenario, we would look at limiting the plan. And if that limit meant taking the life insurance out, that's fine. You don't have to have the life insurance in the plan. We have some clients that absolutely hate life insurance. I mean, we've, we've met those people. And therefore, we don't use life insurance when it's not, you know, it, we don't have to do it in the plan design. Okay. Uh, another question here. What company is the group annuity with? Every product that is utilized within these plans is an American national product. Okay. Um, sorry, just to uh, expand on that. There are six different fund managers inside that group annuity. Um, your uh, Fidelity, um, um, Invesco, uh, MFS. Um, so there, there are other fund managers, or there are fund managers that are in the product, but it's an American national product. Okay. Uh, a couple more questions here are specifically on commission dollars or percentage generated from that, which is something that I can address with those producers. But um, another good question, I know this is a life insurance, but do they offer liability insurance? Um. I don't understand the question completely. I'm going to say no. Um, the only type of liability insurance you have is when you adopt a qualified plan and you have employees, you have to be bonded. And what that does is that protects the employees from the owner taking the money and running, so to speak. Um, and that's a fidelity bond, and it's not expensive, and they're easy to attain, but we don't offer the fidelity bond. It's just something that they have to get. But as for liability insurance, um, no. It's a different sale. Okay. Uh, looks like that's it for questions, and we certainly appreciate your feedback. If there are any others that uh, do come up um, after the webinar, and I know there probably will be, let me know, and we can also, uh, Jonathan, you're available. Are you available for questions if a producer wants to call in, or would you prefer that to come through us first? Um, I'm happy to uh, follow your lead. You okay. are more than welcome to let them call directly into us, and okay. we will answer any and all questions. Okay. Well, that's great. And then I had a couple questions maybe that producers are thinking about, too, uh, as it relates to um, if there's any special contract that they have to have in order to uh, write this type of business, uh, get a proposal, or what have you. So uh, if you would maybe just briefly talk about um, any special contract or product training that's required? Wonderful. Thanks. That's, that's a great question. Um, as long as you are contracted with American National, you can write one of these plans. With that being said, we do uh, check and make sure um, that you have the four-hour CE credit, the uh, four-hour annuity CE credit. Um, it's it's something that our compliance department's a stickler about, and, you know, again, the anti-business unit that they are. Mm -hmm. um, but just make sure you have that four-hour CE credit for the four annuities. That's really the only thing that uh, seems to keep raising its head. Okay. And uh, product training, uh, just the training that they would be required to take for annuity, is that correct? Or is there something special besides the four-hour course? Uh, no, you're you're correct. There is no um, particular uh, product training for the WealthQuest annuity. Uh, we have a disclosure that we can send out. We can show you all the funds, all the expense ratios within those funds, um, you know, some allocations and that kind of stuff. But there is no specific product training for either the either annuity or the life insurance. 
Okay. I did get another question here from a producer, um, and it was, uh, will this type of business or product change with the DOL with the DOL rules coming out next year? Um, I'm hearing our client should be working with an RIA or fee-based only type of rep. Ah, someone finally asked a question about the DOL. No. Um, <laughs> so th this is a big question mark. The Department of Labor has come out with new regulations. They're supposed to come into effect first or second quarter of next year. Um, they've already postponed them once, and there's half a dozen lawsuits to try and completely stop this from happening. Um, I don't know is the short answer, because they have not finalized anything yet. We, uh, they are leaning to either the IMO or the insurance company, or somewhere along the line, someone has to be registered. So that's kind of where they're really trying to iron it out and figure out how they're going to do that, because a lot of IMOs don't want to become RIAs, and you know, a lot of insurance companies don't want to open a brokerage. Hmm. So I don't have any definitive answer there yet. We are trucking along. It is business as usual because we don't have final regs. As these things, uh, I mean, of course, in the background, we are definitely making sure that we comply with everything because we have to. Um, but as of now, it's business as usual. Okay. Okay. Well, very good. And I uh, thanks for your responses. We certainly appreciate your information. Very valuable, very uh, timely, and I think uh, does open up a lot of doors for our producers, um, areas they just have not been prospecting and working in and maybe just didn't know how to go about it. So we certainly appreciate the information and your time, Jonathan. And Michael, thanks again. We appreciate it. And for all of you, you have a great and productive rest of your week, and we'll talk with you again. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. Thanks, everybody.